A really interesting aspect of the landscapes of Monument Valley is the fact that you have these modern sand dunes nestled in and among the sandstone cliffs of the Deshaies sandstone. The sand in these is being derived from erosion and weathering of the old sand dunes, of the Permian sandstones. And so that material is being weathered off and then the wind is, is moving it. And so we have some nice videos showing the wind actually blowing in here. When we were trying to do videos up here, the wind was blowing 40, 50 miles an hour. So you got a really good chance to look at a lot of wind action. And so it, it's really interesting to think that these sand grains came from that sandstone, but the, sand, the grains in that sandstone, they had to come from some other place where you're weathering presumably granites and things like that. They're, most sand comes from weathering of granites. And, uh, and so, you know, this sand has kind of been through a bunch of phases. So in this place, you have modern sand dunes where the sand is derived from Permian sand dunes as represented by the Deshaies sandstone. But the sand grains in the Deshaies sandstone had to come from someplace else. This is the case where we've done detrital zircon work in here, where you grind up sandstones and you, you can probe with a laser individual zircon grains and get the dates of individual zircons. When you do that in here, as people had done for other sandstones around, is what we find is there are a lot of zircons here that are about one billion years old. It's an odd age for the southwest. The ancestral Rockies, we know what age the rocks are in the ancestral Rockies, the local mountain ranges in Pennsylvania Permian time. And those are 1.7 and 1.4 dominantly. And yet we have all these one billion year old zircons. And the explanation is that these zircons had to come from some place that has one billion year old zircons. And so you start looking around and you say, what, what part of North America has one billion year old zircons? And it turns out it's the Appalachian Mountains. There's a province in eastern North America called the Grenville province that's about one billion years old. And it's loaded with zircons. It's, it has a bunch of zircons compared to any other volume of rock you might look at. And so the, the, the results of our studies in here with the tidal zircons is that a large percentage of the grains came from the Appalachian Mountains. Some came from the ancestral Rockies, like we taught students for years. But this was a place where you had a consensus and you just blew it apart because you had a new method. And so in here, when you look at these, you realize a lot of this stuff came from the Appalachians. So you had to have river systems in eastern North America, in the Appalachians. That was the big continental divide at the time. You had Africa off to the other side and western North America on this side. The rivers were eroding from the Appalachians. They were having to transport the grains all the way across the continent. And then once they got kind of close to the, where we are, then they got moved around by wind, they got moved around by longshore currents, they got moved around by local river systems. But you had to bring those zircons all the way across the continent and then rework them. And then they ended up being as individual grains in the Deshaies sandstone. And we didn't analyze these, but I can tell you that these modern sand dunes would have a lot of Appalachian zircon grains in them. So it, it's, you know, it's just a really interesting story, both for how we've used a new method to kind of you know, throw off a consensus that we had that this is how things formed. And also, just thinking about the prolonged history of some of these grains and the histories recorded in them. And you could come up here and scoop these grains and analyze them, separate the zircons and analyze them. And you could say, ah, those are grains that don't have any business being here in southwestern North America, but <clears throat> they're very similar to what's in the Africa. On behalf of uh, Julia Johnson and myself, authors of the Exploring Series of Textbooks, and on McGraw-Hill, we thank you for participating in this and joining us. And uh, we hope that you've found some things that you can share with your students. Thank you very much.